So somebody there, the ticket lady or whatever, said, are, 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 you, are you in the movie? Because Tim didn't look like that now. Tim's hair was short. And, and of course, I didn't look like Eddie at all. I have long hair. And, and, and I go, yeah, this is Tim Curry and I'm Meatloaf. He, he plays Frankenfurter. She goes, I thought so. And I'm going, shh, be quiet. And so I said, look, we brought these people. We just want to try to get in. And she goes, oh, okay, okay, I'll get you in. I'll get you in. And the owner of the Waverly or the manager comes out and goes, what are you doing? And she goes, well, they're in the movie and it's sold out and they want to get in. And she goes, well, they can't come in. I'm going, but this is Tim Curry. This is the star. And, and, sh and she says, she looks at him and she goes, and this girl goes, it's true, it's the star. And the woman goes, okay, I'll let you in, but I'm going to be watching, and you better be who you say you are. And the woman stood there for the longest, until Eddie came up and just stared at us. And it was like really hard to watch the movie because there's this woman going, are you who you are? First of all, they had a real motorcycle, which I, I, I rode little pieces of it, but they had a stuntman. And the stuntman was on the motorcycle that b burst through the, it was part ice and part wax, those the ice blocks. He came through, and then after he went through the wall, they put me back in the freezer, and I came through the hole he had made. So it cut, you know, to Little Nell and back to me coming through. Well, it was tough to ride on the wax, and I kept losing the back wheel, but I managed it okay. And so after that, they're saying, do you think this bike is too much for you to handle? I said, what we, what we need you to do is we want you to, <laughs> this is crazy, we want you to ride up the ramp and around the thing and come down the ramp and circle it. And I looked at him and I said, what? You want me to ride? I said, no, I can't do that. So the stuntman said, well, we can do that. And so they're trying to figure out, okay, we can shoot it so that the stuntman can do it. Now, we got, but we got to get a close-up of me up on that ramp. And so they tried getting me up on the bike, just standing there. But they go, well, it's not moving. We need movement. We need movement. So then they tried, tried me sitting on the bike, just kind of coasting down the ramp, but I didn't have control of it, and the camera couldn't. So, so finally, I don't know who it was, devised this. They took the windshield and the handlebars off the motorcycle and some of the you know, speedometer and things like that, and they put them on the front of a wheelchair. And so I'm sitting in this wheelchair with this handlebars and these things and this, this windshield, and so now they're going, and they've got me with a rope onto the back of this wheelchair. <clears throat> and so they're testing it. Can I, can I run, can I run, the, can I guide this wheelchair down the ramp at some kind of speed that looks like we're actually moving? And we rehearsed it and rehearsed it and rehearsed it, and it was great. And so then we started shooting, and they go, oh, I can't, it's not working, it's not working. So they decided, well, let's mount a camera onto the front of this wheelchair. So now I've got a camera on the front of the wheelchair. I got handlebars on a wheelchair. I got these things on. I got this windshield. And so they go. They say action, speed. You ready to go? Yeah, I'm ready to go. Well, what they didn't realize now the camera had made this front heavy. So when I reach the bottom of the of the ramp, it doesn't just smooth on out. There's a little ridge, and that wheelchair hits that ridge, and it flips this wheelchair. And my stand-in saw me going, he goes to get me, catches his leg in, a, in part of the ramp, snaps his leg. He breaks his leg. He, didn't sp he breaks his leg. I'm now, the camera, I'm falling on the camera. The camera is shattered into pieces. The handlebars are, have cut my arm like this. I've got, I got a cut on my head. I'm, I'm at, there's wheelchair and, and it's like everywhere. There's people in pain and camera pieces and everything and everybody's running around and everybody's trying to help me. And here's this poor stand-in. I think the bone had come through his leg. I can't remember. But he's over here going, oh, God, ah! And they're all kind of, they come over to me. I'm going, I'm okay, but check him out. You know, and it's like, and so then, oh, my God. And then they left me alone and I'm bleeding now. And so I'm going, wait, come and give me somebody. But then, wait, we're not through with this. I know, I gotta, I'll go fast. He told me to go fast. We're running out of tape. Oh, we're okay. Okay. I'm almost out of tape. I know. But, I don't have any more tape. Okay. okay.
so you would think that that story of the wheelchair and the camera and the break in the leg, that would end it. But no. So now then, it comes the day of the stuntman going to ride the ramp. And you see it in the film. So if you watch the film, he comes up the ramp where the people have been standing, and it's uh, above the freezer. And what they've done now is they've gotten me on the motorcycle. And they run, I run the motorcycle up to the ramp, and like I'm going to start it up the ramp. And then they catch it, and we stop. And now the stuntman, and then they go the other side, and I just roll the motorcycle down the ramp on the other end to catch that piece. Now the, motor, the, now the stuntman is going to run this motorcycle at a pretty good clip around a circle going around this ramp. On his first run up the ramp, he makes it once, he comes back around. On the second one, he gets too close to the edge up at the top above the freezer, and the motorcycle falls off the wall. And it gets upside down, and it's an old 1941 military, and it weighs a ton. And it literally, upside down, it, he comes straight to the ground with that on top of him, just like he was still riding it. It just falls like that. Now then, <clears throat> I could never do this in a million years, but you've heard the stories of the adrenaline people get, give them extra strength. I literally, by myself, ran over there and picked this motorcycle up and moved it, didn't move very far, just moved it off of him that far. Like, just picked it up and put it down, not even thinking what I was doing. And I'm standing there watching this guy, and, he, and everybody's now around, and everybody's going, move back, move back. And, and, and he's not moving. He's not doing anything. And the room is falling silent. And we're watching this guy, and all of a sudden, you see his... I don't remember his foot or his hand moved, but it was like he moved, it came right up. And then the minute he opened his eyes, he looked around and he goes, okay, let's do it again. And, and everybody went, whoa, whoa, stop, stop. Are you okay? He goes, yeah, I'm okay. And they said, well, what were you doing? And he said, well, he said, whenever you have an accident like that, the first thing you do is you don't move anything. He said, I don't move anything. And he said, I slowly run up my body to check to see if, there's any pain anywhere. He goes, I go from my feet to my legs to my knees to my thing. And he says, I go all the way up my back, my arms. And he said, I don't move anything until I've checked out every inch, gone through it. Because he said, when that happens, you're, this is like a whole conversation we had later. Uh, you know, you kind of, your body goes into a state of shock, so you don't necessarily feel pain immediately. And he said, so you have to really stop and check it out. And then I went over to try to move the body. I couldn't budget. Couldn't, I mean, I could like, yeah, and, and everybody, then that was the kind of the conversation. How do you do that? I have no idea. But then he finished it and everything was fine. But that's the two stories of Eddie. For anybody who ever wanted to know what happened to Eddie's jacket, I have it. And I've had it since 1974. Sue Blaine did a great job. Look at this. It's perfect for Eddie. But there's little skeleton keychain pieces. And, and we lost a couple when we were doing the thing, and, and, and the star broke when we were, um, this is all mishaps from the set. Like, I lost a star probably in that fall with the wheelchair. A little piece broke off, and at some point, obviously, the chain broke. And so what they did was they used the safety pin just to put it back together. So there you go. It's how it was when I finished shooting, and it's still here, and it's mine, and I have it. Ha, 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 ha.